How's it going you guys? It's Scott with Everyday Solar and today I want to help you actually size out how many panels do you need. Let's say you have an off-grid shed or off-grid garage and you need some capacity to charge up battery powered lawn equipment like this Ego push mower. Now overall this is a pretty easy process. We'll use this push mower as an example and then if you have other loads or other pieces of equipment you just add all those up to get your overall system capability. What panels do you need and then also how much storage do you need in terms of your overall system to make sure that you can charge those pieces of equipment at the set frequency that you need. So let's jump right into it and get those pieces of info that are really going to help sculpt our system. So on the load side two of those pieces of information. One's going to come from your battery. So you can look up the specification of the mower or the blower or the hedge trimmer or whatever piece you're using and you can get it from the specification or if you actually have the piece of equipment with you there's usually a nameplate here which will give you the max battery capacity. This one is 672 watt hours. This is about as big as you'll see when it comes to battery powered push mowers. So this one has quite a bit of capacity that we're going to need to account for. And I'll show you how to plug that into a spreadsheet. And like I said, you can either assess this one load or you can keep adding those loads in to get your overall system load demand so you can plan accordingly. So that's one piece of information. What is the capacity of the battery that we're going to need to charge? The second one is over here on the charger. So on your charger, what we'd like to look at is what is the maximum power draw that this charger is gonna to take to charge up that battery? So we need to know what kind of battery or batteries are we filling up. And then on the charger, again, you're gonna have some type of plate. And here I see it's a 700 watt charger. So I know that my power delivery from my inverter, or in this instance, from my EcoFlow Delta II, has to easily meet that 700 watts because that is the maximum amount that this one charger is gonna to take to charge up the Ego battery. So I'll take those two pieces of information, plug it into a spreadsheet, and also have a link in the description so you can grab that spreadsheet for your own project and add one or more of your different loads so you can size out your own system. Now this is a perfect DIY type of setup, but remember if you're gonna do solar on your home and offset your complete utility bill, that's a whole nother size class. I'm getting 11 kilowatts installed on my home in the coming months. And a good place to start is just to understand the size of that system and the overall cost of that system. You'll find a link in the description and then with the little details on your own house and your situation, they can assess that size and give you an estimate on the overall cost. Now remember that is an estimate and there are other costs that you might need to consider depending on the condition of your roof the age of your electrical system in your house. There's other things that can add to that. And then if that's something that you're interested in, they can also connect you with local installers so you can start to get multiple price quotes and compare and contrast between the different companies. All right, so let's jump into the spreadsheet. Okay, so this spreadsheet's pretty rudimentary, but it can get you at least going down the path of understanding what that need is so you can size out your panels and start working through your system. We start with our needs, right? What are our weekly needs? And right now from a frequent standpoint I'm just sticking to weekly in the future I might do daily monthly and then the ability to roll all that up on maybe a monthly look so the lawnmower the ego that we are looking at is one battery it is 56 volts 12 amp hours I'm going to drain it down 80% so depending on the size of your yard you can change this and I'm gonna say that there's an efficiency factor here of 90% what this efficiency factor is, is knowing that I'm going to have some watt hours stored in a battery. I have the EcoFlow Delta II. And then when I convert that through the charger, the Ego charger, there is some heat loss, right? We have some conversional losses by the time those watt hours get into the Ego battery for the lawnmower. So I'm gonna set that at 90%. Again, you can change this, but then your calculations will be the weekly need from your one lawn mower with that size of battery drained down by 80% and a little efficiency in there, we need 597 watt hours and we need to produce that through our panel or panels. So weekly production, we're looking at a 100 watt panel. The panels that you saw there were 100 watt panels. 
there's an 80 percent efficiency factor i'm going to work into my production system my panels producing through the wires depending on how long those wires are actually stretching maybe i have some line losses going into the ecoflow delta 2 some losses there by the time it actually stores in the battery i have daily peak sun hours in my area of about four hours per day that's going to vary for all of us and with the other links in the description under this video you'll see a link to get your own locations peak sun hours that's very important that's going to adjust how much you're going to actually produce on an average day so that gives me a weekly production of 2240 and excuse me this is actually watt hours not just watts so looking at that i only need one panel i'm going to produce way more than i need for that one mower now what if we had a riding mower let's say we went with an ego riding low mower that has four batteries they also use the 56 volt batteries and they use the 12 amp hour because they need as much juice as they can get i'm going to keep my efficiency factors the same and I'm gonna go ahead and pull down this calculation. This is how you would add in other loads for your own instance. Okay, so that moved us up quite a bit. Now we have just under three kilowatt hour need from the two pieces of lawn equipment on a weekly basis. So from a production level, if I'm able to collect sun all week long with 100 watt panel or panels, Again, same efficiency, same peak sun hours. Those calculations already pulled through. And I'm gonna need two panels. Remember, this is 2.2 kilowatt hours or 2,240 watt hours of production per panel. So I'm gonna to need to step it up to two panels to make sure that I'm able to put enough battery storage in my EcoFlow. Now, one point of discussion here is make sure that your battery storage for your EcoFlow would be sized correctly or whatever batteries you're using. If you expect to charge both of your devices on the same day and pull all of that out, well, obviously we're not gonna get that much solar production during that charge time. So you're gonna to have to have that battery capacity basically ready to go. So just something to consider. But this is how I would size how many panels do I need. And this spreadsheet, a link to it, is in the description for the video. Depending on when you're watching this, we are working on these calculators to get them over to everydaysolar.com. So you might just see a webpage where this calculator is integrated with some additional updates since we released this video. But let me know and give me some feedback down in the comments. I like the all-inclusive systems like the EcoFlow for an off-grid shed where I can bring those PV panels into the EcoFlow and then the EcoFlow is your charge controller, your battery, and your inverter. Let me know, is that your preference or do you guys like to put together your own system where you're sizing the charge controller separate from your batteries and separate from your inverter? I'd be interested to see which path you guys are taking. Now, if I was just considering one piece of equipment, a 100 watt panel and that EcoFlow Delta II would be perfect size for this scenario. But if you guys have a little more demand, you're probably gonna have to figure out your wiring and what type of wiring you're gonna do for your panels. Is it series, is it parallel, or you're combining the two with series parallel. If you need some more help with that and kind of reviewing what those are, check out this video right here. I'll walk you through all three techniques and get you the information you need to start setting up your system. So thanks for joining me on this video and we'll catch you on that next one. Take care.